My name's Brett Little. I'm a Senior Land Service Officer with the uh, Local Land Services in New South Wales. Um, today we've been out on site on a uh, property in the uh, Mudgee region looking at the uh, confinement feeding setup for sheep. The setup that, that, that we've got here today is, is a primarily uh, a sheep system where the animals are being fed from outside. Um, it's uh, set up for, for smaller mobs of sheep. Um, which you know, really is suiting the environment here where we are. Um, the reason why we sort of look at this confinement feeding, particularly in this area, is, is I really believe it's a great fit. Um, in this rainfall area where we're here, we can get rain at any time of the year, uh, depending on, on the season and, and the weather events are kicking through. Um, and by being able to bring those animals in, we're able to control their nutrition, we can control their management, we can reduce some of the issues that we see with feeding those animals out in the paddock. And in an environment like this, I reckon there's probably about a savings of roughly around about 10 to 15% by uh, bringing them in and locking them up. You, you can feed them less because they're not trying to walk up and down hills uh, to maintain themselves. Do what works for you don't have to go to all the best and U-Butte systems. It's about adapting it into your situation, into your landscape and into your management style and also personally what's happening for you. Situation here behind me to have it where we can have all the sheep in and have less time out in the paddock and be looking after our hill country, um, you know, that's, it, it, it's a no-brainer. You've got to go and seek out professional advice and the best advice. We came up with a plan of seven pens, but it only started with four, but the capability to go to seven, and they're 50 metres by 25 metres, with the plan to hold about 200 adult merino ewes, and the budget was 25,000, and it's come out at $30,000, so $7,500 per pen. Um, so that's, that's, all, that's all pretty straightforward because we weren't too far over budget. What I did say today is there's no perfect system, but our non-negotiables are water. You've got to have good water. That water needs to be something that you clean, you can manage. You've got to have enough storage there that's going to last a few days. So that if we do get an issue, it, it's not a nasty surprise. So water's number one principle, it's a non-negotiable. Site selection and location really comes down to the soils, the types, the topography, but you've got to have yard set up that, that allows you enough space for those animals. Um, how you do it, whether you feed internally, externally, uh, whether you've got um, self-feeders or whether you've got troughing, all comes down to your own personal situation, but you need to have enough space in there for those animals. And you need to be thinking about mob size, you know, how big the mob is, how, what type, how many animals are we going to be feeding? Also, is it going to be for younger, old animals? Really what I would say is try to have a versatile feeding area. We do talk about confinement feeding as a drought tool, but it also can be a tool for weaning management, early weaning, um, but also something that we can use after an emergency event like a fire or a flood type situation where we can bring these animals in and, and, and use them. And in the past, uh, where I've been working with people looking at that fire type situation where a place has been burnt out, people who have got that confinement feeding, it makes it so much easier. They've got the gear, they've got the setup. I was struggling to do it the way I'd always done it. So I thought, yep, let's give it a go. And it's still, we've only just started, so I've, we've still got a lot to learn about it, but I can see that it's gonna give us options here when times do get dry, and even when times aren't dry, gives us options. Um, what I would say is um, we get all types of mixes and things that people look at, you know, do what works for you. Um, here in this system here, they're currently using a, a legume grain. It's helping, it's easier to get them on. Um, other people have gone and got, bought feed mixes where they're looking at a total feed mix for those animals. Um, that's all well and good, but you don't need to go that expense. Some of the best systems that I've seen have involved just a simple feeding of, the, of a grain or a, uh, a cotton seed and the like, and, and some hay in that system as well. Keep an eye out for events that we're putting on, any information we can put up. But really, I would say the confinement feeding manual is a good
good first step if you're interested in it. Have a look at it. There's also some other support material out online. There's some YouTube clips. There's also some webinars that myself and others have done on confinement feeding and the like. So there's a lot of information out there. It's just making that first step. More than happy to have a chat if people want to give us a call and talk about it, but also supply some of that information to them.